and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, in reply to His Majesty the King's cable of condolences on the demise of His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. The Emir of Kuwait extended sincere thanks to His Majesty the King for his noble feelings, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King with good health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa also received a cable of thanks from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, in reply to His Majesty the King's cable of congratulations on his accession to the throne. The Emir of Kuwait extended sincere thanks to His Majesty the King for his noble feelings, hailing the solid historic relations between the two royal families and their fraternal ties binding the two brotherly countries and people. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King with good health and happiness, and Bahrain and its people with further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable congratulations to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the glorious 6th of October anniversary. He wished President al Sisi lasting good health and happiness and the Egyptian people further progress and prosperity, hailing the deep rooted historical and fraternal relations as well as the steadily growing ties between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, in reply to His Royal Highness the Premier's cable of condolences on the demise of His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. The Emir of Kuwait extended sincere thanks to His Royal Highness the Premier for his noble feelings, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest at his deceased soul in eternal peace and to protect His Royal Highness the Premier from any harm. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa also received a cable of thanks from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and replied to His Royal Highness the Premier's cable of congratulations on his accession to the throne. The Emir of Kuwait extended sincere thanks to His Royal Highness the Premier for his noble feelings, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless His Royal Highness with good health and happiness, and Bahrain and its people with further progress and prosperity, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the glorious 6th of October anniversary. He wished President al Sisi lasting good health and happiness and the Egyptian people further progress and prosperity, hailing the deep rooted historical and fraternal relations, as well as the steadily growing ties between the two countries. His Royal Highness extended congratulations to the Egyptian Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Medbouli on this occasion. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, in response to His Royal Highness's cable of congratulations on His Highness's accession to the throne. In the cable, His Highness the Emir hailed the solid historic relations between the two nations and its people, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless His Royal Highness the Crown Prince with good health and happiness, and the Kingdom of Bahrain and its people with greater prosperity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the glorious 6th of October anniversary. He wished President al Sisi lasting good health and happiness and the people of Egypt further progress and prosperity and highlighted the deep rooted Bahraini Egyptian relations. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to the Prime Minister of Egypt, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, on this occasion. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. Following the meeting, the Cabinet Secretary General, Dr. Yasser Al Nasser, made the following statement. The cabinet extended its sincere condolences to the state of Kuwait, the Kuwaiti royal family and the people of Kuwait, following the passing of the late Amir, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, recalling the late Amir's significant achievements and humanitarian endeavors. The cabinet also extended its congratulations to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, on his accession to the throne. The cabinet extended best wishes to His Highness Sheikh Nawaf, wishing him lasting good health and Kuwait further progress and development. The cabinet extended its best wishes to students and teachers ahead of the start of the 2020 2021 academic year and recognized the contributions of teachers on Teachers International Day, celebrated annually on the 5th of October particularly in the midst of an unprecedented circumstances imposed by COVID-19. 
The Cabinet stressed the importance of continuing to adhere to preventive measures issued by the National Medical Task Force to reduce the spread of COVID-19 as a civic responsibility to safeguard the well-being of all citizens and residents. In this regard, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince instructed the concerned authorities to take legal action against violators of regulations issued by the National Medical Task Force and relevant authorities to ensure the safety of citizens and residents. The Cabinet affirmed Bahrain's support for Saudi Arabia's counter-terrorism efforts, noting that the security of Saudi Arabia and the security of the Kingdom of Bahrain remain heavily integrated. The Cabinet praised the presidency of Saudi state security for dismantling a terrorist cell that received military and field training inside revolutionary guard sites in Iran. The Cabinet reiterated that it condemns all terrorist attempts that target the security and safety of Saudi Arabia. The Cabinet welcomed the signing of the peace agreement between the government of Sudan and the number of armed movements, stressing that this agreement is a historic step towards peace in Sudan. The Cabinet has approved the recommendations of the Drug Control Committee formed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and headed by the Minister of Finance and National Economy. The Cabinet praised the immediate measures taken by the committee to enhance governance and accountability, improve the dispensing and inventory management of controlled drugs, as well as ensuring the availability of medicine. The Cabinet referred to the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs law amendments regarding narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. The Cabinet also approved a draft resolution proposed by the committee which aims to enhance the procedures for drug dispensing. Based on the recommendations of the Civil Service Council chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Cabinet approved changes to the orga organizational structure of the Information and E-Government Authority. The Cabinet approved the formation of a Supreme Ministerial Committee headed by Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. The committee will be responsible for following up on developments within the GCC, studying Bahrain's policies with regards to GCC joint cooperation, monitoring the implementation of decisions issued by GCC member state leaders and ministerial committees to propose recommendations to create new economic opportunities. The cabinet approved a draft resolution exempting the Bahrain Defense Force and internal security forces imports from import VAT and customs tax fees following the review of a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior. The cabinet approved the accession of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the multilateral convention to implement tax treaty related measures to prevent base erosion and profit shifting. The convention creates room for governments to modify existing bilateral tax treaties in an efficient manner to eliminate double taxation. The cabinet approved executive regulations for the decree law 16 of 1998 concerning organ transplantation and approved the draft decision presented by the deputy prime minister and chairman of the committee. The Cabinet approved three reports produced by the Education and Training Quality Authority and presented by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs. The reports were reviewed by the Supreme Council for the Development and Education and Training, chaired by Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum on public hospital and primary care autonomy presented by the Supreme Council for Health based on the health insurance law and referred it to the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Financial Balance. The Cabinet reformed a memorandum presented by the Ministry of Health on the progress made in the training of Bahrain's health workforce during COVID-19 to the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Financial Balance. The Cabinet approved the government's response to a proposal regarding a national center for that supports innovation in artificial intelligence. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 25 of 2020 appointing Abdullah Yusuf Al Dawadi as Director of Support Services at the Ministry of Health. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 14 of 2020 amending Law 15 of 2007 regarding narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. The edict as brigbalin and gabapentin to the second group psychotropic substances of Schedule 4 of Law 15 of 2007. The Kingdom of Bahrain celebrated today World Teachers Day through a remote meeting that was attended by the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naimi, in the presence of undersecretaries, assistant undersecretaries, principals, officials, and public school teachers. The Minister delivered a speech in which he congratulated the teachers on the new academic year and expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for their unlimited support to the education march in the Kingdom. He also praised the follow up of Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak 
Mubarak al-Khalifa in this regard. He praised the national initiatives and the achievements made on the education level and hailed the role of teachers in assuming their duties and ensuring the success of the previous school year and wished them all further success. Dr. Naimi stressed that the current circumstances require exerting further efforts to overcome all challenges and ensure the continuation of the education march through e-learning that is based on His Majesty the King's Future Schools Project and Digital Empowerment. He affirmed that ministry's keenness to further hone the skills of teachers and prepare them to be partners in the prosperity of the kingdom. This meeting comes to shed light on the important role assumed by teachers and introduce them to digital tools, programs and services provided by the ministry to enhance their abilities to manage remote classes according to the aspired standards. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to form a committee led by the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, with the membership of the Minister of Shura and Representatives Council's Affairs, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, representatives from the Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister, the Ministry of Interior, the Supreme Council for Health and the Royal Medical Services. The committee is responsible for ensuring that immediate measures are taken regarding medicines in terms of governance, accountability required for storage, distribution, sale, review, especially narcotic drugs, and review the relevant laws and regulations. The committee affirmed that its recommendations, which were approved by the cabinet today, included referring the proposed legal amendment to the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs for study, approving the issuance of decisions regarding the inclusion of new narcotic substances into the current schedules, and the decisions concerned with organizing, monitoring, and dispensing of drugs and pharmaceutical substances in these tables, as well as the application of mechanisms to control the dispensing and storage of medicines in addition to the activating and integrating system for the management of dispensing and storing medicines. The committee revealed the most prominent results for the audit and the departments concerned with dispensing and storing medicines and their related procedures which were carried out through inspection visits and reviewing the technical side in addition to the policies and procedures. Accordingly, an executive plan has been developed to improve dispensing and storing medicines in government pharmacies, consisting of five points, legislation, policies and procedures, activation of electronic systems, auditing and quality assurance, and security, safety and infrastructure. The committee assigned a team to implement immediate measures to improve the flow of operations in the central store, which included the following. Reviewing working hours where materials will be received at specific times, stopping the manual submission process, and abstaining from delivering materials unless there is an employee from the central stores, starting and continuing to check the work progress, while training employees to follow policies. As for security and safety, the decisions included strengthening security and delivery site and not allowing unauthorized persons to enter, mandating the presence of security personnel when destroying or disposing of materials, and ensuring that safety standards are applied. The measures taken to improve the process of operations in Salmania Pharmacy on the operational side were the following redistribution and arrangement of medicines according to the type of treatment for inpatient pharmacy, outpatient clinics, and central delivery allocating a specific allocation for storing medicines and materials and the allocation of a special plate for receiving home orders. While improvements in the procedures and policies aspects included operating outpatient pharmacies 24 hours, 7 days a week, implementing the drug delivery policy only from pharmacists, setting up a mechanism for d drug retrieval, dispensing outpatient drugs for inpatient pharmacy, as well as allocating outpatient pharmacies to dispense medicines for emergencies. The legislation aspect includes articles that are working on preparing legal amendments to strengthen the control of medicines and tightening penalties and issuing decisions to include the drug group Lyrica in the list of narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances and to strengthen controls regarding the categories of doctors allowed to dispense these medicines. The policies and electronic aspects included rearranging and inventorying materials in pharmacies and mean stores, entering materials data into the inventory management system, setting policies and developing workflow mechanisms in the main pharmacy, training employees, reviewing and updating policies and procedures. The committee emphasized that the implementation of the plan's provisions will contribute to achieving the desired goal through the correct and safe practices in all operations of managing the stock and dispensing of medicines and providing pharmacies with high quality services in addition to the availability of medicines for all patients.
The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Hamidan, affirmed that the decree law issued by His Majesty the King to pay a percentage of the wages of Bahraini workers, up to 50% of the insured wage in the sector most affected by the spread of the coronavirus, reflects His Majesty's keenness on ensuring vocational stability for citizens working in the private sector, particularly in the sectors most affected by the virus. He underscored the royal directives and the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, adding that the most productive sectors have overcome the repercussions of the coronavirus. Virus. He highlighted the decision issued by the cabinet in meetings last session, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, to pay 50% of the wages of insured Bahraini workers working in the private sector for three months, starting from October until December of 2020. After coordination and consultation with the relevant official authorities, the Minister of Labor and Social Development issued an executive decision in which he identified the sectors most affected by the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic, which are entitled to financial support. The minister added that the social insurance organization will be responsible for supporting the wages of Bahraini workers in the private sector for a maximum of 50% from the surplus of the unemployment insurance fund, provided that the Bahraini employee is insured by the end of September 2020 or is employed and insured by the National Employment Program until the end of the month preceding the da date of exchange. Upon the provisions of the Royal Decree issuing Law No. 29 of 2020, amending some provisions of Decree Law 4 of 2001 regarding the prohibition of combating of money laundering and terrorist financing, Advocate General Ali bin Fadl Bainain has set up a prosecution office specialized in tackling financial crimes and money laundering. The new prosecution office will be headed by a public advocate who will be assisted by public prosecution members. The Financial Crimes and Money Laundering Prosecution Office is specialized in the crimes stipulated in the penal code as well as in special criminal laws and financial and supervisory legislations that include crimes of bribery, embezzlement, appropriation, facilitating the appropriation of public funds, deliberate damage to public funds with the intention of making profits, causing damage through negligence or treachery and abuse of office or influence. The establishment of the office marks a fundamental development in fight against financial crime and money laundering cases as there is a need to have full specialization in tackling such crime and ensure a full-time dedication to the investigation and action on the reports received by the public prosecution. The move is all the more important amid the existence of the multiple procedures stated in the financial and economic legislations and the law on prohibiting the fighting money laundering and the requirements to investigate such crimes, especially with regard to gathering evidence and recovering funds. The office establishment decision includes organizing the prosecution operation in a way that meets the requirements based on the international standards and combating crimes. The operations include the creation of an electronic database for the cases and decisions related to controlling illegal funds as well as their nature, value and amount, the orders issued to seize and manage them, and their disp disposition based on the final orders and verdicts. The prosecution will also prepare statistics and provide information to the relevant authorities. The world celebrates today the World Habitat Day, and this year it is held under the theme Housing for All, a Better Urban Future. More on this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain is keen on achieving the goals of Sustainable Development 2030, especially the 11th goal, establishing sustainable cities and local communities, and the Kingdom has made great achievements in this regard. This occasion aims to achieve a high quality of life for citizens and to ensure the sustainability of housing, in cooperation with the UN Habitat Programme, especially after the adoption of the Urban Agenda in 2016, through which the government of Bahrain has succeeded in including a set of plans and programmes that contribute to the implementation of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. The housing sector has always taken into account the quality standards, which resulted in improving the citizens' living standards in a manner that is consistent with the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa of building 25,000 housing units. Bahrain has received widespread acknowledgement of its housing efforts, and in the year 2006, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received the Honorable Award for Outstanding Achievement in Urban Development and Housing by the United Nations Human Settlements Program in Geneva. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 4,927 with 662 recoveries, 352 registered new cases and two deaths. 96 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 254 are contacts of active cases and two are travel related. The deceased were 77 and 53-year-old female citizens. The ministry expressed its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules, follow instructions and avoid public places when possible.